Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to day two of our Business Technology Summit. Um, and welcome to this session, um, Azure Data Factory and Synapse 101, taking your data to the next level. We appreciate you guys jumping on. A um, couple of housekeeping items that we're going to cover right off the bat. Um, Zapra, if you want to move to the next slide. This session is going to be recorded. Um, there will be available to all the attendees after the event is over. Um, everyone's going to be muted. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we'll respond to them as, as we go throughout the session. If you're having any kind of connection problems, um, use the chat or you can actually contact our support, our support at support at journeyteam.com. At the end of each session, what we're going to do is we're going to send out a, <clears throat> a brief survey to fill out. Filling out the survey gives you an entry into a drawing for a $50 Amazon gift card that's given out on the hour each hour. Um, you'll also receive an additional uh, entry for the drawing of a new Sapphire Surface Pro 9. Um, a little bit about Journey Team. Um, we've been a Microsoft partner now for almost 30 years. We've got uh, close to about 150 team members now. Um, we've got 350 plus active clients and have completed over 1300 projects these last four years. Um, some of the accolades that we've received recently was partner of the year, a couple of years in a row. And then we just got introduced to the inner circle, Microsoft's inner circle, which is given to the top 1% of clients or, pro or partners. Um, I know today we're going to be going over this session. We're going to be going over the data, but as uh, you look to grow or if you look, want additional information across the Microsoft stack, we do cover um, everything across the Microsoft stack. So feel free to reach out to us if you do have questions um, that are with anything that's outside of uh, what this session is covering today. So again, we appreciate you guys jumping on. I'm going to turn the time over to Safra, who's going to be our presenter today, and um, we'll go from there. Safra. Awesome. Thanks, Chad. And thank you guys for joining us today. I am absolutely thrilled for this opportunity to share with you a little bit about Azure Data Factory and what we're doing in that space. Um, like Chad said, my name is Safra Parks. I've been a data engineer here at Journey Team for about six months. Prior to that, I did data science and um, I am loving this data engineering space. So let's dive right in. Um, basically, what we're going to do today is take 45 minutes and in that 45 minutes, I'm going to show you how to build a data lake. It's going to be super quick. We're going to move pretty fast paced. Um, but by the end of it, you'll see end to end what's going on and what we mean when we say, hey, let's consolidate your data. Let's build you a data lake and let's improve your business process. I do have this divided into two sections. So the first part of this presentation will be gathering requirements. So we're going to talk about where your company is, what your vision is, how to get there, some strategies for setting that. And then for the second part, we'll be a lot more hands on. We'll walk through some tutorials of building the actual pipeline, how to connect to sources. Um, here at Journey Team, we do use the medallion architecture, so bronze, silver, gold, and I'll dive more into those in a little bit. OK, we've got a scenario going on here. We have two companies. The first one is called AdventureWorks, and AdventureWorks specializes in outdoor gear. And they are looking to acquire another company called Beaver Winterwear. Beaver Winterwear makes winter coats. And what our executives want to know is had we done this merger back in February, what would our sales have looked like? How much money would we have made if these two companies had merged in February of this year? So that's our situation here. We'll go ahead and dive in. Um, the scenario right now, AdventureWorks, their data is stored in a small relational database. Um, unfortunately, it's underutilized. So today we're going to go ahead and beef that up. They also have data that's stored in Excel spreadsheets on computers. And as a data engineer, that's kind of a big no-no. So we're going to help them get more in line with industry standards. And we'll build them a full data warehouse and a relational database. OK, so this first part, gathering requirements. Some questions to ask yourself. Um, I would recommend starting with where's our data currently located? So do we have a database? Do we have Excel spreadsheets, OneDrive, the cloud? Where does your company store your data? What format is your data in? Do you guys use a relational database? Do you use CSV files, JSON files? Is there any structure to that? If so, let's go ahead and write that down. 
what relationships currently exist within your data. If you're familiar with an entity relationship diagram, also known as an ERD, that's a great place to understand the relationships between tables in your data. If you don't have that, um, that's okay. We here at Journey Team can help get one established. Um, I'm not going to dive into ERDs in this presentation just for the sake of time, but again, totally happy to chat about that afterwards. The next question to ask yourself about your company, has any validation or modification happened to our data? So this could be things like if we have an Excel sheet, are there calculated columns? Are we using formulas? Are we deriving columns? What's going on currently um, within our data? And then we want to identify the business process. So an example of what this would look like would be the end-to-end -end process from when, for example, when a customer places an order to when the order has shipped. What are all the steps in between that? Um, what is the data involved with each of those steps? There's lots of other business processes, of course, depending on your company, but that's just an example of one. And then the final question I would encourage you to ask yourself is categorizing sales used to determine measures. So this is going to be how are we grouping our data? Are we going to group it by region? Are we going to group it by product category? Is there another structure that would work better for our company? And you'll want to understand that when you start out so that you can lay the foundation from the very beginning um, with your data being structured correctly. The next section is where do we want to go? So we, we understand our current state, um, hopefully, you and your company have been able to talk about where your data currently is, and then we're going to talk about our vision. Where do we want to go? Um, just three questions here. So who's the intended audience of our data? This could be business leadership. It could be external vendors. It could be customers. You want to understand who you're preparing this data for. The next one is, do we need a central location for all of our data to be stored in? Chances are the answer to this question is yes. Um, and so maybe ask yourself, do we already have a solution? Is it working for us? If not, um, then do we need to reassess that? And then the third question is, are there any transformations that need to happen to our data that we haven't been able to accomplish yet? Um, oftentimes these are called nice to haves or future state changes. Um, there are limitations to using Excel spreadsheets and we understand that. And so we, wanna un we want to make a list of all of those changes that you would like to have and let's go ahead and implement those. Let's bring those into your database so that your data is working for you instead of against you. And then this final step here is actions to take. So we know where we're at. We know where we want to go. How are we going to get there? First step, I would encourage you to list out all the data that needs to be collected and where to pull it from. Just like we talked about, this could be an informal checklist. It doesn't have to be um, super formal. I would include the tables and the naming logic if it already exists. Um, the second thing would be to list out any known transformations that need to happen to the data. So again, that's the current transformations that are happening and the future state transformations that you want to see. If applicable, let's put together one of those ERDs that list out those relationships within our, our tables and then identify our desired file architecture. Like I said, here at Journey Team, we use medallion architecture, so that's bronze, silver, gold, but you could also use stage transform production or whatever else fits your business. Okay. Here we go. We're going to dive right into our hands on part. I do have to warn you, um, nerds only beyond this point. If you are super engaged for the rest of this, and that's a pretty sure sign that you're probably a nerd and we love it. So here we go. Let's go ahead and dive in. OK, so for our bronze layer in this layer, what we're going to do is collect our data. This is basically a dumping ground. We don't really want to do any transformations or any manipulation of the data. We just want to bring it all in, get it connected, and have it available. Our silver layer, this is where we're going to do most of our transformations or editing the data. We can add calculated columns, we can rename things, we can do joins or unions of the various tables, whatever is appropriate um, for your situation. And then our last layer is gold. There are a couple of transformations that can happen in the gold layer. Um, this is mostly used for reporting. So this is where if you have a Power BI team, they can pull data from the gold layer. If you have a data science team, they can also pull data from there. Um, this is the clean and validated data. So our goal is to get you to gold. Um, within our bronze layer, we have lots of sources that we can pull from. Some super common ones are static files. So this could be CSV, JSON, Parquet files. Um, we pull from lots of API endpoints. Some common ones again are REST, SOAP, lots of other APIs that are available. It, we could also pull from a relational database. And within that database, um, of course, there's different types of relationships. So we could have one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many. 
And if the data that you are wanting to pull into your database isn't on one of those three, then we have over 100 other options that Data Factory can connect to. So pretty much guarantee you shoot us a note, ask us if we can connect, and I can pretty confidently say the answer will be yes. In this bronze layer, I am going to show you four, <clears throat> four little tutorials here. So first, I'm going to show you how to upload a CSV file to a container. Um, that's what we're going to do whenever we want to get those files off of local computers and put them into a more central location. The second thing I'll show you is how to connect Data Factory um, to that CSV file that we just uploaded. So how do we get it into our pipeline? The third thing will be connecting Azure Data Factory to a relational database. And then the third thing will be, I'll show you how to run the pipeline. <clears throat> for these first two, um, these will be the Beaver Winterwear data. Um, and then for the second one will be the AdventureWorks data. OK, upload CSV file, Beaver Winterwear. Here we go. So the first thing we want to do from our Azure homepage, let me go ahead and hit play here, is we're going to go to our storage account. When you click in here, we have a containers tab on the left side. And right now this is blank. So let's go ahead and create a container for our Beaver Winterwear data. I'm just going to name it Beaver, keep it pretty simple. And then right here, we want to select the correct access so that Data Factory can read and write from here. We'll hit OK. And when we open this up, we, again, we can see it's blank. So let's go ahead and upload our file for the February 2022 sales of Beaver Winterwear. We'll hit Open. And as you can see, I've uploaded this before. So we'll hit Overwrite just to make sure that we're uploading the most recent copy. Once you hit upload, we can see that file is now in that container. And if we click into it and hit edit up here at the top, we can see a preview of the data. And this looks awesome. That's exactly what we were hoping to see. Super straightforward, simple, quick process. All right, so now we're gonna take that file and we're gonna connect Data Factory to it. So this is the Data Factory homepage. We've got our bronze pipeline here, and we're going to bring in a copy data activity. You want to go ahead and rename it. I'm going to call this Beaver just to keep it simple. Um, if you're bringing in multiple tables, then you might want to put a more unique name. But for the sake of today, we're just going to call it Beaver. And then over here on source, we want to select our source data set. And in this case, oh, I think we started over here. In this case, we don't have a source established yet. So let's go ahead and create a new one. And we're going to connect to that blob storage where we just put that CSV file, the CSV. So we'll select delimited text, hit continue, and we want to rename it. Again, I'm going to keep this super simple, name it Beaver, and select our link service. So now whenever we go in here, we should be able to select our Beaver container and see that file in there. Perfect. We'll hit OK. We do want to use our first row as headers, so we'll hit yes to that checkbox. And then in this case, we don't want to import our schema. You can change that later on, not a problem. Um, I just preferred not to when we're initially bringing it in. So then our sync data, this is where we're sending this data. We have a sync data set called data warehouse parameters, and we're going to sync this to our bronze layer because that's where we want to put our files. We're just gathering them in, so we're going to call it bronze beaver. Let me put a pause really quick. Um, our options down here, we do have um, an auto create table option, we want to select that. We want this to go ahead and create our bronze beaver table. And then down here, we're going to add a pre copy script. And then we're going to say drop table if exists, and then the table name. What that does is ensures that we are overriding with the most current data. If we don't select that, then you'll end up having several bronze beaver tables and you won't know which one's the most current. So we'll go ahead and type out the rest of that script drop table if exists our schema and our table name. That looks great. Mapping, we're going to leave that blank, leave default settings and user properties. Pretty straightforward and simple. And the last thing we want to do is just make sure that the data is coming through as we expect it to. And we can see that it is. We've got data in the columns that we anticipated having them in. So what we've done so far, we've uploaded that CSV file to a storage container and we've now connected Data Factory to that file, which is awesome. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and connect to the AdventureWorks database, and then once we're done with that, we'll run the pipeline. All right, so we're in that same space. We're going to do another copy data activity. Instead of connecting to a blob storage, we're going to connect to a relational database. We'll call this one AdventureWorks. And our source from our drop-down menu here, 
we need to create a new one because again, we're connecting for the first time. And it's going to be a SQL database. Go ahead and rename it to whatever appropriate name for your table. In this case, we're going to do the sales order detail table. For AdventureWorks and for a linked service, let's go ahead and create a new linked service. Again, we'll title this appropriately. And then we have credentials here. You'll want to fill in the correct credentials for your company. So I'll go ahead and do my subscription, my server name, and my database name. That all looks great. And I'm going to use SQL authentication. You do have other options here. Um, in this case, I'll go ahead and fill in my credentials and test that connection. If it says successful, then we can go ahead and hit create. And then we'll name our table here. Let's see, we want to select the sales order detail. Awesome, we'll select that. And again, I prefer to not import the schema automatically. We can change that later on if we need to. We'll hit OK. We've now connected to the source. So let's preview the data. Awesome, we've been able to pull in this table and it has data as we were expecting. <clears throat> so then we need to go ahead and click on our sync. And we're going to tell Data Factory where we want this data to go. So again, we want to sync this to our bronze layer. <clears throat> Awesome. So we'll do bronze and our table name. Mm, looks like it may have frozen. Let's see. Here we go. We're going to call this AdventureWorks Sales Order Detail. And we're going to copy that same process where we want it to auto create our table. And then if that table already exists, let's overwrite it with our most current run. Bronze, so that's our schema. And then our table name, we'll just copy and paste that in there. Beautiful. Again, mapping, settings, and user properties. Usually I leave these as default. I'll show you what the mapping looks like. So if you hit import schema, you can see your call names and your data types. So that can be a good place to reference it. Okay. Settings, user properties, we'll leave those as default. And then we want to go ahead and skip to our next slide, and I'll show you how to run these. So whenever you have a pipeline and you're ready to activate it, all you have to do is hit a debug button. So up here at the top, you can see where it says debug. We'll go ahead and select that. Make sure you're clicked on the blank canvas, and then you can hit debug. And it'll have a little progress bar down here at the bottom. We can see that each of these succeeded, which is great. And so in order to validate that and make sure that the data loaded the way that we were anticipating, we're going to switch over to Data Studio. We'll refresh our tables. And once we do that, we can see we have both bronze um, AdventureWorks table and bronze Beaver table. And we'll just preview that data really quick. Awesome. So here's what our AdventureWorks table looks like. And then we'll do the same thing for our beaver table. Select top 1000 and it'll give us a sample of the top 1000 rows in this table. Great. So we have data in both of these. We can see that there is a little bit of manipulation that needs to be done in order to make these tables match so that we can merge them together. So let's go ahead and move on to that next part. So our silver layer. Um, congratulations. If you stuck with me this far, you made it through the bronze layer. That's a third of the battle. And um, we know that. We now have our data in there and we're going to start doing some uh, manipulations on that data. We're going to do the, any necessary changes. Some good things to consider doing in the silver layer. You can add an index. You can perform joins or unions. You could do string manipulation, splitting or merging columns, finding averages, rounding to the correct decimal. Um, you also want to make sure your data types are correct so that if it's a date, it's labeled as a date. Um, you want to make sure that your column names are consistent and you want to make sure the table name is correct. So lots that we can do in there. Um, we love a good Dilbert. So it says use the CRS data uh, database to size the market. And then Dilbert's like, that data is wrong. OK, then use the SIBS database. That data is also wrong. Can you average them? Sure, I can multiply them too. And we love a good multiplication. However, here at Journey Team, we want to make sure that your data reflects accurately. So we're not going to be multiplying any tables together. We are, though, going to help AdventureWorks um, go ahead and join their tables together with Beaver Winterwear. Okay, in this um, section, so in the silver layer, 
hang with me. This will be the longest section. Um, we're going to do five activities. The first one is I'm going to show you how to rename columns using SQL. The second one is we're going to copy data from Data Studio to Blob Storage. The third item is I'm going to show you how to rename columns using Dataflow so that you'll know how to rename columns using two different methods. The next thing I will show you is how to add a new column and then finally we'll merge those tables together. OK, renaming columns using SQL. Um, in our team here at Journey Team, we call SQL the happy place. So whenever we can do stuff using SQL, we like to. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. It's fairly straightforward. So we'll go ahead and be in our silver pipeline and bring over a copy data activity. Rename this. We're going to call it Beaver because those are the columns that we're going to rename. And we're going to do a data warehouse query. So we're going to say, all right, we're going to pull from our data warehouse. And what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to copy that list of names um, of each column from our data studio. When I copy that and paste it in here, we can now see that we have each column name in the beaver table. In order to rename these, all you have to do is hit the space bar, single quotes, and then within those single quotes, put what you want it to be called. In this case, we are trying to match the tables between Beaver Winterwear and AdventureWorks. Since they both have an order ID column, we're going to rename the Beaver Winterwear table so that its order ID column matches what the, the AdventureWorks table is called. So we're going to rename order ID to be sales order ID. We're going to rename count ordered to order quantity and etc. Once you have your names in there the way that you're hoping them to be, you'll hit OK and then select your sync location. So in this case, we're in our silver pipeline. Let's go ahead and sync to silver. Data warehouse parameters, fill in your schema, silver, and our table name. We'll keep it consistent and just call it Beaver. Awesome. And then we'll do the same thing that we've done before, where we'll auto create the table and fill in our script. So drop table if exists, and then your schema and your table name. So silver, Beaver. Beautiful. And that's really all that it takes to rename columns using SQL. Super straightforward. As always, you can go ahead and validate that your data is in there the way that you anticipated seeing it. We can see that it has been renamed, and that's fantastic. OK, our next step here is we're going to copy from Data Studio to Blob Storage. This might seem a little bit backwards. Um, the reason for doing this is that I've set up this environment using a self-hosted integration runtime. That's basically what we're using to run this. Um, there are multiple options. Um, data flows don't connect to data when using a, um, they don't connect to data in Data Studio when using the self-hosted integration runtime. And so we're gonna go ahead and dump our data into Blob and we'll just connect our data flow to that. Um, the other advantage though to this is I wanna show you how easy it is to switch data types. So we've been working with CSV files up to this point. I'm going to show you how to switch that to a JSON file. Um, super straightforward. That's the wrong kind of blob. I don't know how that got in there. OK, so our first step here, we want to go ahead and pull over a copy activity like we've done before. And per usual, we're going to rename this so we know what's going on. I'm just going to call it copy to blob. I think that's going to be straightforward. Awesome. And then for our source, let's go ahead and select our data warehouse parameters. And we're going to pull in that table that we had just dumped into Data Studio. So bronze, beaver. And we can leave the rest of the options on this page as default and then syncing it. So we're going to go ahead and sync it to blob storage. So we'll select blob. And then this is where you can choose your data type. So we could keep going with CSV. In this case, let's select a JSON file. We'll want to rename this. I would be careful about using just iterations, so don't call it data one, data two, data three. Go ahead and give it an actual description. This is our Beaver data, and it's a JSON file. Now, if we go in here, we can select Beaver, and that's our container. We don't want to select a specific file, so we'll just leave it the way it is and hit none, hit OK. Awesome. So then we're saying, let's go ahead and sync to this folder. We'll debug our pipeline. Go ahead and make sure that it runs correctly. When we hit refresh, looks like we have green check marks across the board, which is always a good sign. And we're ready to move on to our next step. 
So we've now taken that data from Data Studio and put it into blob storage. And now in this next step, I'm going to show you how to rename the columns using a data flow. Data flows are um, very much at the heart of Data Factory. They're one of the key components. And the sooner you can get familiar with them, the better. So let's go ahead and dive into that. Hit play. So data flows on the left, we'll just hit new data flow. Pretty straightforward there. And then it needs us to select a source. And in this case, we want to pick that source from that blob storage that we just um, that we just synced to blob. So let's rename our data flow. I'm going to call it B for data flow. Super original. Output stream name. You can leave this as default or you can rename it. If you have several sources, it's helpful to identify which source it is. So we'll go ahead and say this is our Beaver input data. And then our data set, our Beaver JSON file. That's the one that we just created. And let's test that connection. Connection successful. That's awesome. Always a little sigh of relief there. We'll go over to our projection tab. This step is, again, optional. I do recommend importing your projection. You can see your columns and you can see your uh, data types. So that's always good to know. Now to rename this, we're going to skip straight to our sync step. Um, you don't need any intermediate steps, but you can see if you do want intermediate steps, we have tons of options. We have formatters and row modifiers and schema modifiers. In this case, we'll just go ahead and select our sync. Again, you can leave this as a default name or rename it. I'm going to call it our beaver sync so that we know what's going on here. We're syncing our beaver data. And for our data set, we'll hit new blob storage. We'll select our JSON file, keep that consistent. We'll rename this. So this is our Beaver data again, and we're syncing it to our silver layer. We'll do our link service to Beaver. Select our Beaver folder, hit OK. And again, I don't want to import the schema, so I'm going to hit no there. And what do we want this file to be called when we sync it? I'm going to call it silver and then just beaver keeping it simple and you do want to specify your file type so dot json in this case we'll hit okay that looks good we'll test that connection connection successful awesome so then over here we'll come to our settings and this is a super important step if we want our file to sync to a single file then we need to tell our data flow that that's what we want to happen. Um, so we're going to scroll down here in our menu and we're going to hit output to a single file. And then it's going to pop up this message that says output to single file requires single partition to be the selected partition type. And basically what that's saying is that we can only run one partition for this data if you want it to all go into one file. And that's fine if you're working with tons of huge data you might notice a latency when you select this. Um, in my experience, I haven't seen it really affect the speed. So we'll hit OK, S select single partition. We're good with that. And then that message will say awesome. And then we'll go ahead and name our file. Again, we'll do silver, beaver, and JSON. Mapping. So this is where we get to rename our columns. We'll deselect that auto mapping. And then you get to just name it whatever you like. In this case, it's the same columns that we did in our SQL exercise. So I'll go ahead and fill all those in. Beautiful. Okay. From here, we can also rearrange our columns. Um, I think it makes sense to have the order ID first, so we can just drag and drop. And then when we hit our data preview and refresh, we'll just make sure that all of our data looks correct, which it does. It's in the correct order with the names that we have given it. In order to run our data flow, um, it's important that our pipeline knows that that data flow exists. And so we're going to go ahead and type data flow and drag that activity right after our copy data activity. So first we're going to sync it to blob and then we say once that's done, we want to go ahead and run this data flow. We'll name this activity and then we'll say the beaver data flow. That's the one that we want it to run. It'll say awesome parameters, user properties. Those will just both leave as default. We don't need to do anything with those right now. So let's hit debug, see if this will run without errors. Sometimes they take a moment to load. Okay. 
OK, so it looks like they both succeeded and that's fantastic. So then if we go back over to our storage container and click on that file we just created, let's hit edit. Make sure that our data is in there the way that we anticipate, which it is. Looks like we have data for each of the columns that we expected to see. Perfect. So now we want to go ahead and add one more copy data activity. We'll drag our pipeline over. These arrows indicate what order you want each activity to run. And in this case, we want to take the file that we just created, so our Beaver Silver Sync. We always want to double check that the data is looking good. In this case, it is. And then let's go ahead and sync that back over to, um, to Data Studio. So we'll do data warehouse parameters. And this is our silver table. So let's call it silver and beaver. Awesome. Of course, auto create. Drop table if exists. And then your schema and your table name. Once we've got that in there, we'll go ahead and click out of the canvas, debug it. Looks like it ran correctly. So that's good and we'll just go validate over here in data studio we'll hit refresh select top 1000 and we can make sure that our beaver data actually came over the way that we were anticipating looks like it did perfect okay the next activity i'll show you is how to add a new column if we are merging two sales tables together then we want to make sure that we know which data came from which company in this case, we're going to just add a column to each table that specifies which company it came from. So when we merge them together, we can identify which rows belong to which company. So we'll start back where we were just a minute ago. Let's go into our data flow and we're going to add an intermediate step. So from that big drop down menu we saw a minute ago, we'll hit the plus button and we want to do a derived column. So we have two options here when we hit the column. What do we want this to be called? I'm going to call it company because this column is going to identify which company this data is from. And then for the expression, you just identify what you want to be filled in there. You can do single quotes and leave it blank, um, but this came from the Beaver Winterwear company. So let's go ahead and fill that in. So we'll do Beaver Winterwear within single quotes. That looks good. And let's do a little data preview here. Okay. So then we'll need to add our mapping here so that we can accommodate for that last column that we just created. If you just type in company, we'll bring in that new column. We can leave it named as company. That's totally fine. We'll hit refresh on our data preview, and we can now see that we have all of our data plus a company column that says, hey, this data is from Beaver Winterwear. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for AdventureWorks. I went ahead and skipped ahead and copied this activity for AdventureWorks so that you don't have to sit through seeing it repeated. Um, but then we'll just go ahead and do this same option company, but we're going to change this to AdventureWorks instead of Beaver Winterwear. And data preview, and we'll hit refresh again. There's our company, AdventureWorks, and then we can do the same thing in the sync. Perfect. And just like that, in like two seconds, you have a new column. OK, so this last step, here we go. Um, this is the last step for the silver layer. So we're going to fill in null values and merger tables. This is we're finally accomplishing our goal. Um, when I say filling in the null values, um, our AdventureWorks table has some columns that the Beaver Winterwear table does not. In order for our union to work the way that we want it to seamlessly, we want to go ahead and create those columns for the Beaver Winterwear table, and we're just going to fill them in with null values. Since Beaver Winterwear doesn't track discounts, we'll put a discount column, but we'll just put it as blank. OK. So if we hit play here, we're back in our canvas. We've got our data flow, and we've got our copy activities for both um, Beaver Winterwear and AdventureWorks. Um, something that's kind of cool here is that you can have multiple activities connected to a single activity or a single activity connected to multiple activities. So we're going to put in a description and under our settings here, let's go into our data flow. We're going to create a new one and we want to pull in our data set that we just created. So let's go over to adventure, test that connection. That looks awesome. And we can see that our company columns there. So then let's pull in our Beaver data as well. 
I'm going to pull in the two tables that will be merging together here in just a minute. And that data also looks fantastic. Perfect. So then let's go ahead and create those null value columns for our beaver table. And this is the same process you saw just a minute ago with our derived column. So beaver winterware is missing a sales order detail ID table or column. So we're going to fill that in with blanks, just empty quotes. And we hit data preview. We can see that each of those columns are now in here. Awesome, that looks great. It's one of the few times that null values actually really do look good. So then finally, the, the moment we've been waiting for, let's union these two tables together. This is pulling from our Beaver line. And so then it just says, OK, where do you want to connect to? And we'll say Adventure Works. And then when we hit Refresh, we can see that we have our data populated just the way that we were hoping to. And if we scroll down, we've also got AdventureWorks data. So we now have our Beaver Winterwear table and our AdventureWorks table merged together into one. We want to take that table. Let's go ahead and sync it so that we can access that. We'll rename this and we'll call it sync the combined table so that we know what we're doing here. And for our data set, we want to hit new. Up to this point, we've only done either Beaver Winterwear or AdventureWorks. And since we're now working in a combined space, let's go ahead and create a Bob storage spot for that. We'll stick with JSON because that's what we've been working with so far. And we'll rename this to be our combined table. Perfect. Now for our linked service, again, we only have Beaver Winterwear and AdventureWorks. So let's create a new linked service for our combined data. We'll go ahead and name that combined table, put in our credentials, test the connection. And if it says successful, then we are good to go ahead and select a file path. Now we don't see a container for AdventureWorks and Beaver Winterwear combined. So let's create one of those real quick. Container, we'll name it combined table, give it the appropriate access and hit create. Beautiful. So when we switch back to Data Factory, we can now see that folder. We'll say, yep, that's where we want to sync to. We don't want to import a, sync, a schema, so we'll hit none. Perfect. Let's test that connection one more time. And then we want this to output to a single file. So we'll do that same process where we set a single partition and we'll go ahead and name it combine table silver JSON. For the errors, mapping, optimize, we'll leave all those as default, but we do want to double check our data preview and it looks great. OK, so if we go back to our pipeline here, um, we've already run a good chunk of this pipeline and we don't want to spend the time to rerun it. So I'm going to bring in a wait activity. When you do that um, and you hit, you activate that wait blob, it's going to cause everything after it to not run. So we only run, want to run this last part. So let's delete that relationship there. And then we're going to put a wait for the first part of the pipeline so we don't have to run that. And we're just going to run our data flow that we just created. We'll hit OK. Hit refresh and it succeeded. That's perfect. When we go in here, sorry, that went a little bit fast, but when, when we go back into our storage container, we're going to check and make sure that our um, combined table has data in it. So we'll hit edit. So we see our company, we have Beaver Winterwear, and if we scroll down, we also have AdventureWorks. And that's perfect. Okay, last step, let's copy this over to Data Studio. This is kind of one of those wash, rinse, repeat activities. You guys are certified experts at this point. So we'll go ahead and rename it, select what source we want to pull from, and we want to get that combined table that we just created. So we'll select combined table. Double check that looks good, looks great. And then we'll select our sync tab. Give you a little bit more room here to see. Sync data set. And we're going to sync this over to Data Studio. So we'll do our data warehouse parameters, put in our schema. This is a silver table. And we're going to name it just combined table. Perfect. Auto create. Fill in our drop table if exists. And then we'll debug this last part. We'll use our integration runtime. And then once this runs, we should be able to reconnect our pipeline so it's all in one. And we're going to switch over to Data Studio and make sure that our combined table is in fact there. So far looking so good, select top 1000, and it's perfect. We see our Beaver Winterwear data and we see our AdventureWorks data. 
Um, in this case, we could have done a little bit more standardization. So for instance, unit price, we could have rounded those so that they're um, they each come to two decimal points. Um, same thing for line total, but we'll save that for another another tutorial for you guys. OK, congratulations. We made it to the gold layer. Um, we debugged our pipeline. So here in the gold layer, um, I'm going to keep it super short today and I'm just going to show you how to how to sync this to, to our gold layer. Um, when you are here, it's also a good place to validate with your end users. Make sure that this that the table that you have is what they were hoping to see. Um, double check that there's no more changes that they want to happen. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And I'm pretty sure I could hand this over to you guys and you'd be like, I got this. I can walk through this. You've shown me already. So we'll do our copy data activity. I'm just going to leave it um, the default name, our source data set. So we want to select our silver table. Since we're not doing any more transformations on the data, we're just going to sync that directly into our gold layer. So we're going to select our silver combined table. Perfect. And then we'll go over to our sync tab and we're going to tell it that we want to sync that silver table to our gold layer, that we don't need any more transformations and we're good to go. So we'll type in gold over here. We're going to keep the table name the same because our business user said that's great. Of course, auto create will fill in our drop table if exists. And let's debug that. It says it was successful. And we're just going to double check by refreshing over in Data Studio. We do see the gold dot combine table. That's a good sign. Let's select the top 1000 and just validate that we do have data in here. OK, perfect. So we see beaver winter wear with those null columns that we added. And then if we should keep scrolling down, we see adventure works with data populated as we had anticipated as well. Um, congratulations to all of you. You just built um, a data pipeline. You now have seen how to build a um, data lake. That is fantastic. Um, one pro tip here is that gold layer is going to be the place where you want most of the business to connect to. So again, if you have a Power BI team, have them pull from the gold layer. Your data scientists, they can pull from there. Sometimes they might want to pull from previous stages, but um, your data should be good to go. Okay, it says, I finished studying other companies' cloud migration strategies. Close your eyes and hope for the best. Seems to be the most popular. Here at Journey Team, we disagree. We think this should be a very intentional process. We believe that there should be clear communication and that you should be better for working for with us um, than you were before. We believe in be leaving the world a better place than we found it. And so to help accomplish that, we've put together this super cool Data Lake House Fast Track. And this basically takes what you saw today and applies it to your company. So we're going to take a couple of relational sources, CSV sources, um, whatever is applicable for you. We'll help you with some transformations, um, get some entities going, and any transformation logic that's necessary. And then you'll walk away with a Power BI report as well. Um, an end-to-end -end process to get you started. For our guests here today, um, we want to give you 10% off if you're one of the first three companies to sign up, which is super cool. Um, I know it can be super intimidating to to say, oh, we need to build a data lake house or we need to build a data warehouse. It's going to be expensive. It's going to take time. It's going to be involved. And we want to take that stress off. And we want to show you that it's possible um, to get a foundation going with minimal cost, minimal time, and with the potential to build on it if that solution does meet your company's requirements. Um, we do have our email here at the bottom, so info at journeyteam.com. If you're interested in that or if you just want more information about it, please feel free to shoot us an email. We're happy to chat, happy to talk about any data sources or anything related to data, really. Um, and thanks for, for tuning in today. Chad, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Safra. Thanks, Safra. Appreciate it. What kind of questions? Anybody have any questions? Please feel free to put those in the chat. We've got uh, about 15 minutes left. And so if there's any questions that you guys might have, um, you can pick Zafra's brain and get after it. You'll notice that Mariah put in a link to the survey again. So if you've got a chance to um, fill that survey out, um, possibly win a gift card and then also get entered to win the Surface Pro as well. Zafra, we got a question from Matt. How much would running a similar pipeline cost you in Azure spend? Any idea on that front? 
In Azure Spend, I'm not familiar with that term. Just like the, how much would it cost you to run the, that pipeline in Azure? Gotcha. Um, we weren't working with a whole ton of data in this particular example. It would, my guess would be less than $100 a month. End to end. Probably yeah, those, much less. Yeah, probably much less than that would my guess too. Maybe like a couple dollars. I, don't know. I think I think in this example, so I've only run this for about a week and it's been, I think, four dollars. Um, if you're running it the whole month, then yeah, it'd probably be closer to 20. And that um, for those of you wanting to take advantage of that data lakehouse fast track, uh, if you sign up within the next two weeks, that's kind of the time frame we're looking at on that 10% uh, discount. So. Now, the next so, question from Matt was, what's the best tool you've found to estimate EPL costs in Azure? Matt, it's a fine question. Um, doing it and seeing what happens is a very strong indicator of how much it's going to cost. The, uh, the calculators that are available out there are, are probably, I mean, they cover every single scenario you could, you could think of, but in that they're so complex, um, Sometimes they can be a little hard to get right the first time, um, but estimate higher than you think, and then uh, when you come in lower, everybody will be happy, sadly. <laughs> Prezer had a question. Besides the implementation costs, what kind of licensing data cost does Azure charge? Are you charged per transformation, et cetera? That's a good question. Um, it will depend on how you structure your pipeline. Um, you can set it up to where you have reserved resources, or you can set it up to where you use them on demand. Um, so it'll just depend on on what uh, method you choose. There's lots of options. Microsoft has made it very possible for um, just about anybody to find a resource that works for them within their budget. So if you have static data that doesn't change, are you charged for keeping it in Azure? or by each read? That's a good question. Um, to upload it once, I believe that it doesn't continue incurring costs. Um, whenever you run your data flows, that's when the cost is incurred. And I guess on top of that, you'll just incur whatever storage fee you're consuming too. Mm -hmm. So if you're, I think a, like a gigabyte of, um, Blob storage is like six cents a month, something pretty dang cheap. Um, and then it, as long as it's sitting there, you still have to incur that charge. But mm -hmm. if you're reading it through a data pipeline, then you'll incur a, a charge. But if you're like uh, querying it through, I guess it depends on how you're using that storage too. It all depends, Trezor. That's <laughs> the right answer. <laughs> depends on how you set it up, actually, because you could. You could be charged for each read or you could be charged. Well, you'll for sure be charged for storing it. Um, but depends on how you set it up. You could be charged for each read. If you query it with Power BI, that does not incur a cost. They're Preston, like cousins. Did you say no on that, Preston? Yeah, <laughs> no, that does not incur a cost. Okay. Trezor, one more. Can you use a Snowflake database instead of Azure Data Factory piece and do the pipeline side of things? Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of clients who use Snowflake as their database and their pipeline, um, and then we consume things after the fact. But yes, for sure. Yeah, that list of 100 plus um, connections, Snowflake is absolutely part of them. Funny thing is, you can choose to run Snowflake in Azure or in AWS, so it's like your distant relatives, I guess. Because they're all running on the same blood. <laughs> I'm looking to move to the cloud, but not sure where to start, especially with deciding best places to store data. You recommend this as the best place to start looking? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you have questions about your specific company, shoot us an email and we'll talk about details for that. But what we showed you today um, was just two examples. So if your data is currently stored in a relational database or if it's in CSV, static files, um, I mean, in just a couple of minutes, we were able to bring it into that cloud space and get it going. So I highly, highly recommend.
obviously I gave a whole presentation on it, so <laughs> absolutely start here. <laughs> and Trezor, you could also uh, reach out to Jake Berry. He's your account manager. I could get some time set up to talk through things specifically for you guys too. Thanks everyone. Thanks guys, we appreciate you. Again, don't forget to fill out the survey, um, put any kind of questions that you might come up with um, after this session's over and um, get entered to um, win those gift cards and possibly the Surface Pro. But have a great day. Thank you again for attending. Appreciate you guys.